to be telling us more about domestic violence, what it is, the forms, how to prevent it, and also what is their role. So stay with us. You are so, so welcome. Thank you, madam. Yeah, I would love you to say hello to our viewers before we can get into our discussion. All right. Good morning. Good morning, dear viewers. You're welcome to the program. I am Assistant Superintendent of Police, Ajuang Loi Miriam, yes. like they already introduced to you. I'm from Nagalama Police Station in Child, Child and Family Protection Unit. I bring you greetings from Nagalama Police Fraternity. Thank well, you. You are so welcome. And like I started out saying, uh, Madame Ejong, um, domestic violence is a disease and it cuts across. It's affecting everybody in our families. And so many people have had this word and we even talk about it this morning, but I know that there could be someone out there that doesn't know what domestic violence is or even the forms that it takes on. Maybe if you can enlighten us in that line. Okay, about domestic violence, I'm going to be discussing the causes, the effects and many other things. But for now, we are talking about what is domestic violence and yes. its forms. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence is any act that inflicts harm on a person or people in a domestic setting, which may include physical, economic, psychological, and sexual forms in its nature. Um, domestic violence, uh, like I already told you, it happens in a domestic setting, which may include marriage and cohabitation. Um, it usually affects children, parents, and the elderly in a domestic setting. So let us look at the forms of domestic violence. We have a physical form. In the physical form, there is uh, inflicting of physical injuries that involve beating, mm. slapping, kicking, among other, other things that inflict injuries onto a person. Mm. Now, let me talk about the sexual form. In the sexual form, there is a coercion into sex. Whether in marriage, it is supposed to be, people are supposed to sit and discuss. There should be consent, not force. Mm. But in certain homes, there is force. There is forced marriage, even in, in there is forced sex, even in marriage, mm. which is not good. There is female gen genital mutilation. It's also another form of sexual abuse. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to the next form, which is emotional. In the emotional form, it involves use of uh, languages, like abuses, um, threats, uh, humiliation in the public by a spouse. So let's look at the economic form, which involves control of a partner. Mm. Like you do not allow them to access, to, to access edu further education. Mm. You limit their their employment some some people do not allow their spouses to get employed mm. they do not allow them to go for further studies they do not allow them to do career development so all that is domestic violence mm. so that is briefly about domestic violence and its forms well, uh, when you tell us that this is causing harm, which could be physical, sexual, emotional, and then also economic, one may be wondering why would someone not let their wife go work? Why would someone go on to their wife and start clobbering them? What are the causes and when it happens, what are the effects and how can it be handled within families? Okay, thank you, madam. Um, about the causes of domestic violence in our homes, mm. There is drinking and mm -hmm. uh, drunkardness or use of drugs. You find that in a home where one spouse, most, most especially the men, mm -hmm. when they drink and get drunk, they come back home and others butter, others begin using those words I have been telling you about, insults and all that kind of humiliation. Mm -hmm. But they do all this under the influence of the of alcohol, alcohol and the drugs mm -hmm. that they use. Mm -hmm. Still, we have cultural influence. Mm. Under the cultural influence, you find that uh, culture dictates that uh, women should produce both, both sexes of children. Mm. But you find that maybe in a home, the, the mother only has girl children. And because they are longing for boy children, it leads to violence. They start battering. They start abusing you. They start denying you certain things that you're supposed to benefit from in the family. Mm. Um, let's look at uh, unfaithfulness. Mm. 
most especially when one spouse or one partner is cheating, there is always violence in that home mm. because there is going to be less, lack of trust in the family and then people will start fighting because you're not sure where your friend went to. Mm. You're not sure if at all he has not been cheating on you. So mm -hmm. all that leads to domestic violence in our homes. Now let's look at social behavioral factors like aggressiveness. Mm. Some people are generally too aggressive that they cannot sit on table and discuss with their partners. Mm. So that leads to domestic violence in our homes. We are going to look at family influence. In some of <laughs> our works. homes, yes. you'll find that... Uh, your brother is married to a lady that you don't like. Mm, the family mm. will start coming up. They influence this man. Mm. And it leads to violence in that home because there is going to be no mutual understanding since the family is coming up a lot into their family matters. That's, mm. That also leads to domestic violence in our homes. So there is also upbringing. Mm. Violence leads to violence. It breeds violence. If a person grows up in an environment mm. that has been violent, they do not see the need to be peaceful in their families. Yes. Actually, it's the cycle will always continue. Mm. In other words, mm. violence breeds violence. So let us try as much as possible to raise a violent-free community so that the future is more peaceful than it mm. is right now. Wow. Then we have struggle for authority. We have homes where the man wants to show authority. The mm. woman also wants to show authority. There is no respect in such homes, and there is always violence. Mm. Every person feels they are strong enough. The woman also wants to show the man that I am the head of this home. That leads <laughs> to violence in our There can only be one head. Exactly. Mm. We have peer pressure. Some people do it because they see their friends beating up their spouses and they think that they can as well do the same thing. The humiliation is done in public and they feel maybe if I also back at my wife, <laughs> she will start respecting me. <laughs> so that peer pressure also leads to violence in our families. Mm. Uh, briefly, that's, that's what I heard about the causes. Mm. Let's look at the effects. So some of the effects of domestic violence in our homes, we have death. We very well know that uh, there are so many people who have lost their lives to domestic violence. You find that the violence has been occurring in this home over and over again. So on this particular day, they get into a fight and the, the wife or the husband is battered to death. Yes. Actually, almost every day we have such cases. So in order to save our lives, please, let us not use violence in our homes. Let's use peaceful measures in order to to reduce on such, such issues of death and murders that arise from domestic violence in our families. So it also affects, uh, it also, uh, affects economic growth and development. You find that where there is violence in a family, mm. at some point, one party might be prosecuted and is taken to prison. Mm. So the development in that home is affected because the person who is supposed to run the family is not there. He's mm. in prison. Yes. And somehow it also affects the government because our growth and development is affected because of such, such kind of acts of domestic violence. Mm. Yes. It leads to terminal illnesses, um, it like pressure. You find that some people, because of too much stress and depression that arises from domestic violence in their homes, they get pressure, they get stroke. Some people lose their, their eyes, they lose their teeth. They lose some important parts of their bodies. And also leads to HIV, by the way. Mm. In case of unfaithfulness, you find that one party has brought HIV in the family. And yes. it ends up destroying the lives of the people in this family. Mm. Yes. It also leads to family breakages. In a case where they cannot handle their, 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 their issues anymore, mm. you find that some people end up breaking up. And when they break up, the children are left to suffer. Yeah, that's true. And yet they are not part of the cause of this violence. Mm. So domestic violence has led to very many families breaking up, which is really not good. Um, it also violates children's rights. Mm. You find that in a home where there is violence, 
they do not even think about how the children are going to school, how the children have eaten, the health of the children. No one wants to know. The home is to whom it may concern. Mm. So our children are left to suffer. And then, like I said, violence breeds violence. Mm. It breeds violence. That is another effect. Mm. Because the moment I grew up in that environment, knowing that violence is the way to go, yes. You will grow up knowing that whether you beat your wife, there is nothing wrong with that. Or whether you don't respect your husband, there is nothing wrong with that. So violence mm. breeds violence. If we do not fight domestic violence right now, we are breeding a violent generation. Oh, yes. Um, it also leads to loss of property. You find that in some homes, because of too much domestic violence, Maybe they had constructed their house together or they mm. had acquired some property or wealth together because they can no longer stay together. They will be forced to sell off this property mm. and divide it. And then after selling the property, you will realize that whether they have divided the money, they will not, they will not get back the property. Of so the property not. will be lost, be lost in the long run. Yes. And also, in, 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 in a place where, let's look at physical violence, the other party has been battered. So there is need for treatment. Mm. The only cow, the only goat that you have in that home is what you're going to <laughs> sell so as to see your spouse get medical treatment. So mm. violence leads to loss of property. Yes. So that is what I had briefly about that. Maybe we shall go to the next one. Well, uh, yes, we have understood for the causes. I wanted to talk about this place where many men think that it is on the woman to actually produce uh, different sex uh, children. Yeah. But if you study biology, we know that it actually goes back to the man. It's exactly. because of the man. He's the giver of seed. Yes. So it is important that they understand that. But looking at... Uh, the causes and effects i think this is so eye-opening especially the point of violence breeding violence and i think this is on top of the list when it comes to most men that are beating up their wives they saw it somewhere maybe by their guardian or even their own uh, parent well i am reminded of a story of a boy I know very well in a school he was beating up everybody but he kept saying I'll beat you up like my father beats my mother and that is really really sad so you are very very right right there now I want us to get into how it can be handled especially now that it is in the family setting if they are going through uh, violence how can it be uh, curbed or stopped altogether Okay, thank you very much, madam. Yes. Um, looking at how we can handle domestic violence in our homes, if at all you're facing any form of violence. Yes. Um, number one, I implore us to have family meetings. Mm -hmm. In case you feel the family can help you, please call those family members that you feel can be of help to you. Sit down with them, sit down with your spouse, and you handle the issue. Discuss about it. They usually say a problem, a problem shared. shared is a problem halved. So the moment you talk to the family members, you never know. The other party might change and the violence will stop. Mm. So I urge, I urge us who are, who are facing violence in our homes to do family meetings. And then also peace talks amongst the couples. Mm. Yes, you can settle it within the two of you. Yes. If, at, if at all it has not yet gone out of hand, if it's in the early stages, sit down with your partner, tell them, this and this is not what I prefer in the family. You no longer respect me. You no longer take care of the children. You sit mm. and talk. And if the other party has a listening ear, I believe you could also solve that by having a peace talk among a few people. Oh, yeah. Usually, for married people, I believe the bedroom is our parliament. You mm. go sit in the bedroom <laughs> yes. at your convenient time, discuss about the issues, mm. and see how to go about it, other than using violence, other than battering your wife. Mm other than uh, shouting at the children, other than shouting at the woman, talk to her and let her know what is causing all this. Yes. Then, as we sit down, I believe we have to identify the cause of this violence. Mm. Identify mm. it within yourselves. What is causing violence in your homes? Discuss about it and see how are you going to go about it. If it is lack of trust, how are you going to make your partner develop the trust mm. that they, they, they had before. Mm. Yes, let us identify the, the cause and 
we see how to go about it. And then another thing we can do to curb down violence in our homes is to instill discipline in our children. Mm. Just like we said earlier on, violence breeds violence. Mm. If we instill discipline in the children, they will grow up to be responsible and they will grow up to know that violence is not a solution yes. to our problems. And then we can do mediations or guidance and counseling. This mediation can always be done by maybe the area LOC ones, police, counselors, even the family members. Mediation is very good. It has always helped families that are able to listen. Mm. And then in case the violence has gone out of hand and you feel you cannot handle it within yourselves, please report the matter. You can report to police. You can report to the LOCs. You can report to probation and welfare office. You can report to other organizations like FIDA. You can report to religious leaders, amongst other stakeholders that can help you to handle your domestic violence issues at home. Mm. So do not sit back and die of violence. Mm. And we, you, we end up picking dead bodies because you <laughs> thought you could handle it on your own. When oh, you yes. feel it's a lot for you to handle, please report the case. For us as Child and Family Protection Unit, we are always ready to mm. handle your matters. Well, when we talk about the Child and uh, Family Protection Unit, someone may want to know your role. Now, when I come and report to you, what do you do? So, when someone reports to my office a case of domestic violence, mm. there are many roles that we handle depending on a particular case. Mm. There is a case where someone will come and tell you, Madam, I have not come to report my husband as such, <laughs> but I want you to call him Scare and sit him. us down. <laughs> yes, in that mm. case, I will call the spouse. We shall sit down and do mediation. We mm. guide you and we try and see what are the causes of the violence in this home. Okay. That is what we call mediation. We do mediation in our office. And then we also do home visits. Mm. There are cases where you feel you cannot handle from the office. You have to go and do home visit. You go to that particular home, sit them down and handle the matter. And still in the home visit, there are those you handle in office and you feel there is a need for you to move to the home and see how are they, mm. how are they faring? Is you there any through. change? Mm. Yes, we do that follow up through the home visits. Mm. So still my office does uh, community policing or awareness just like I am doing right now. That's mm. the role of my office to ensure that we move out to the public and let them know how they can handle their, their domestic issues when, uh, if at all they have any sort of violence they are facing. Mm. We do that po community policy. So we also do prosecution. In a case where the violence is too much and there's need for prosecution, we go ahead and do prosecution so that the perpetrator is made to face the law and pay for their acts. Because there are people who can never change. Even mm. when you sit down with them and try to mediate, you'd find that the, the cycle is just continuing. So we, we, we prosecute them. What if the victim refuses prosecution? What happens? They if decide the victim, to forgive. If the victim re refuses prosec prosecution, of course we do not force it. Mm. If they refuse, like I told you, we do mediation. And okay. we give them time. Tell them, go back home as we keep monitoring. Okay. If we see there is no change, obviously the victim herself <laughs> or himself will come and say, no, madam, this mm. time it's too much. Take Let him. us, yes, take him. Okay. Of course, m most times they don't want prosecution. Yes. But by the time they come and tell you, take my husband to court mm. or take my wife to court, mm. it means that it's too much and they feel you mediation or anything anymore. else can no longer handle them. Okay. So as a means of prosecution, Usually we, we testify in court like the investigating officers. They have that time when they're supposed to go and testify. Mm. So as to see that the file or the case is handled to conclusion. Mm. We do testification in court. Wow. And then we do referrals. We do referrals to probation. We do referrals to other organizations. We do referrals to courts. There are cases that come to our office that you realize that it's civil in nature, it's not criminal. Mm. Yes, we refer you to court. Still, even if they are criminal, if we feel that court can handle it best, we still refer it to court. Mm. So our office does a lot of referrals. And still, Child and Family Protection Unit, we, we try our best to see that the victims get treatment in case of physical violence. Mm. Yeah, we ensure that they go to hospitals and get treatment and they get well because 
our role as police is to secure lives and properties. Well, wow. so if there is no health, there is no life. That is true. Yes, so we are not only there to handle issues of ladies. Most people believe that Child and Family Protection Unit only favors handles ladies women. or favors ladies. Yeah. Men are also welcome to our offices. If mm -hmm. you're facing any form of violence as a man out there, mm -hmm. do not be scared. We are open. We handle everyone. We receive children. We receive ladies. We receive gentlemen. Everyone else is, is welcome to our office. Do not think that we are biased to handle only ladies. Mm. Yes, thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And that is a very, very important uh, point. So many men actually think they cannot go and report. And sometimes they believe that they will not be believed or understood because they are seen as the macho. But I've seen a woman beat up a man before. Yeah, so exactly. these things happen. Let's not be shy about it. And like she has said, they are here to protect your life. Now, someone may be asking themselves, how approachable are you? Uh, is your office open? Where is your office? Is there a particular office they can go to? Or there are so many places that are reachable. Okay, my office is approachable. It mm. is open every day mm. for anyone who is facing violence. If you're within areas of Nagalama, mm. Um, Nagalama is located in KMP East, Kampala Metropolitan East. Um, it's in Mukona District. It's on Kayunga Highway. Mm. Yes, it's very open. Whoever feels they are facing any form of violence, do not feel shy. Come, we are always there to help you. And we are very, very approachable very approachable indeed yes. and yeah i have been given their official line just in case you need to call in and maybe ask more and know how you can be guided through domestic violence he is the number for you zero seven zero seven zero seven zero seven six zero one zero seven five i repeat zero seven zero seven six zero one zero seven five it is their official line they're going to hand you well we have always believed that the police is so far from us but they are here to help you that is why they are here to tell you that we are waiting for you do come and we help you out and sometimes the extra said most people don't want to put their spouses in prison so they will not put him in prison. They will not put her in prison. They shall find ways of mediating your case so that you can get back together, reconcile you. So don't worry. Just go report him or her so that you can deal with this issue and save life. Do you have any parting shot? Anything you want to say before we close? Mm, I think I only want to implore the listeners to... Make sure that they don't face any form of violence. If you're facing violence, do not sit back. Look for a solution so that your life is secure. And let us not forget that violence breeds violence. Mm. You have had train up a child in the way they should go and we always tell you here that it is even in your actions not just the words so act well towards your spouse act well towards your children so they can also learn to be nice to other people so that we can curb domestic violence thank you so much for coming through and thank you so much for being with us well that was is at hand with me daphne karungi kangave have a good day <laughs>